Hey guys, it's Mama J. Today I want to share with you a Pac-Man Frog bioactive tank. Now I just got in some supplies this afternoon from the BioDude and the BioDude has some great uh, supplies to put your tank together with and I've been so excited to be able to do this uh, tank build and share it with you. So let's get started. Now what I am doing today is upgrading my Pac-Man Frog Pixel from a 5.5 gallon tank to a 10 gallon tank. Now this should be uh, fine for the rest of his adult life. Um, when I first got Pixel as a little baby, he was probably the size of a quarter, maybe a half a dollar, and now he's at least four inches in diameter. I'm, I'm telling you, he's a hoss. He really is. Um, now, Pac-Man frogs really don't need a lot of space because they are sitting in weight predators, but a 10 gallon tank will be perfect to give him a little more space to move around in. And so I've gone ahead and opened up my supplies from the BioDude. And the first thing that we want to add is the substrate. And what I ordered for uh, Pixel is the terra firma. Now, the terra firma is very good. It's got some coconut fiber in it and as well as some other things. And the thing that I like the most about it is that it will maintain uh, burrows. So as the Pac-Man frog sort of burrows down in his little hole, it will actually help maintain those burrows for him. The other thing is that it's wonderful as far as uh, retaining moisture. So it will help uh, keep the humidity level up in the tank. So the first thing we're gonna do is obviously just pour this into the tank. Okay. You know, probably I should have put down a towel on the carpet, but don't tell my husband. Hopefully this won't be one of those humongous spill moments. So we're just going to dump uh, the substrate down into the tank here. I went ahead and ordered a couple of bags because I really wasn't sure how much substrate that I would want to have. And uh, for a Pac-Man frog, you really want to have a pretty nice deep substrate of at least three inches in depth, maybe more. And so I've got uh, the first bag in here and I think I am going to add just a little bit more here to get my uh, depth a little bit taller. Now setting up a bioactive tank is really easy and it really makes a tank work for you. By the time that you add in your cleanup crew, such as your springtails and isopods, that really helps um, break down any waste that's in the tank and really makes your tank very low maintenance. Okay, so I've got Got everything just sort of situated here in the tank as far as the substrate. And our next step will be uh, going ahead and using some of our dechlorinated water and just spraying everything down. And we want to get everything really nice and damp. So I'm going to grab my water bottle here. And we're just going to spray it down really good here. What I want to do is I want to make the substrate really damp, but not like wringing wet. So actually I've got a little extra water right here that I'm just going to pour in here. And then if I get a little bit too much, then I'll just, but I think this is going to be fine. So we're just going to mix it up really good here. Of course the fun part to me is getting to play in the dirt. Okay, I've added a little more water here, and I'm just mixing it up. And you want the, the dirt to kind of be able to clamp a little bit so you can feel, you know, the moisture in it, but you don't want it to be wringing wet. Now, the other thing I'm going to do here is I've got Pixel's existing tank right here, and I have added a lot of uh, springtails and isopods into this substrate, so I'm actually going to sprinkle a little bit of this into this new bioactive tank to kind of help get it jump-started. Um, I have some, uh, I believe they're dwarf white 
uh, isopods and I culture my own springtails. I got a, uh, a starter kit of springtails. I believe it was from Josh's Frogs actually and have just continued to maintain that and it's been great to just sort of add in a little bit of extra uh, springtails um, to any of my bioactive tanks. So we've got a little bit of that um, dirt that had the extra cleanup crew in it and I am just mixing all of this up together really good. Now the terra firma does have a little bit of uh, wood pieces in that and that's okay because it's going to break down over time and that's really going to provide some some good nutrients uh, for your cleanup crew and really help make that soil um, have some good bioactivity. Okay, my golden pothos plant, I think I'm going to plant here along this back wall. And I think that'll look nice. Um, I love pothos because they're a really hardy plant and uh, they're, they're easy to grow. So that's, that's right up my alley. Um, now I have a larger plant um, that I think I will put in this back corner. Let's see if I can get it wedged in there good and kind of fill in some dirt around it. I think that'll look nice. And Pixel had a piece of cork bark in his old uh, tank here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and reuse that. I'm going to sort of angle it here in the corner and see if we can sort of create him a little hide. Um, I found a lot of times he'll like to burrow up next to the cork bark. So that kind of creates a nice little hiding spot for him. Let me turn the tank around here so you can see it a little bit better. So we've got a pothos plant here in the back corner and we've got one along the side wall there. And the next thing I want to do is upgrade Pixel's water bowl. Now I have used a small Exoterra bowl in the past but since he has grown a lot um, I decided to use a little uh, plastic water bowl instead. And I had actually seen this on the BioDudes uh, website, uh, one of his videos, that he had used a plastic container, you know, kind of like what you would put a snake or something in at a reptile show as the water dish. And I thought, well, that's a great idea. And when I saw this at uh, the Dollar Tree, I thought, well, I'll try these containers and uh, see if I like that as an option for a water dish. And, you know, they're cheap and disposable. So if I wanted to replace it with something else, you know, I've, I've not got a big investment in that. So I'm going to put it here in the corner on the cool side. I'm going to kind of dig down my substrate a little bit and see if I can kind of get it level with, um, with the substrate. So that way it'll make it easy for him to get into. And the other thing I wanted to do was to add some river rocks in there. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it is a deeper water dish. Um, I want to make it such that it, he can get out of the, the dish easily. So if he gets in the water to sit, um, he can, he'll have those river rocks to kind of help him to hop out a little more easily. So another thing that we can do to kind of add a little bit of bioactivity to the tank is to add some more biodegradables. Now, um, in this case, I'm going to use just a few of these uh, oak leaves and crumble those up just a little bit. We're going to just kind of mix mix that in just a little bit here in the tank, and that's just going to add a little extra to our bioactive substrate here. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. And I might add some, a little bit of sphagnum moss here. I've got, I got another bag of sphagnum moss. By the way, this is a great deal on sphagnum moss. I got this huge bag for probably the same price or less as what I would have gotten for just a regular box of moss at the pet store. 
I'm going to wet this down a little bit, and I think I'm just going to fill in sort of around this plant back here. That's just going to kind of help with some humidity and just sort of gives it sort of a pretty look too. I like kind of the look of having the moss around the plant there. Uh, just a little bit more here. So I think everything looks looks pretty good. So the next step is to add Pixel and see what he thinks. I've got Pixel in his tank now and I think he is uh, one happy boy. I'll give you just a little bit of an overview of the whole tank here. Again, we have our uh, golden pothos plants. We've got a little bit of sphagnum moss there over his cork flat. And cute Mr. Pixel just uh, sitting there poking those little dark eyes out of the substrate. I just think that is the cutest thing. And over here we have his water dish with uh, some river rocks. So I think everything looks good. I've got his LED light uh, set on top there. And the only other thing that I need to do is just hook up the uh, under the tank heater, which I think I'm going to put on the side of the tank. Um, that's helpful um, to if you have moisture in the bottom of your tank and under the tank heater. Sometimes that can crack your tank. So for these guys, I like to put the uh, the heater on the side of the tank. I do also recommend that you use a thermostat with uh, Pac-Man frogs, and that just keeps... Uh, your heat mat from getting too hot and burning your frog. But overall, I think uh, this was a great success. Thank you so much for joining me on my tank build today. And I hope that maybe this has inspired you to create a bioactive tank for your Pac-Man frog as well. I think uh, Pixel's really gonna enjoy his new enclosure. And the only challenge that I have at this point is trying to find some place in the room to put the new tank. But anyway, um, I hope you guys have a blessed day and be sure and give it a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe for more videos to come. I am working on a care video right now for step runner lizards, so that's something that you can look forward to, I hope, within the next week or so. Um, I've had kind of a hectic family uh, schedule and work things going on right now, so I'm a little bit behind. but. Be sure and stay with me and hit that notification bell so you'll be sure and know just as soon as one video is released. So you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time.